You will sleep better than you have ever slept. You've never been this relaxed. Are you ready to change your life? I'm Rusty Diamond, certified hypnotist. You don't need to leave your house. You can stay in your bed. You can stay in your favorite chair. You just need a computer or your phone. And you can get a hold of me. Stay at home. I'll make your life better. Hypnosis is great.com. It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. Yo, man. Oh, Miss Rusty, what is up, everyone? It is Friday, whatever that means to you. Uh, Monday's great, Tuesday's great, uh, Friday's pretty great, whatever. Make your day great. If it's not great, change what you're doing. Welcome to the podcast, the public access podcast here on the Rusty Diamond Podcast Network. I'm your host, Rusty Diamond, and we have uh, Leon Black over here in the sort of off camera. So if you're watching on YouTube, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can listen. Uh, if you're thinking, oh, man, I don't like looking at this guy's face. I want to punch this guy in the face. Go check it out on anywhere you listen to podcasts. Uh, but if you're listening to podcasts, you're like, hey, I wonder what this guy looks like. Uh, go on to YouTube. You can check it out there. So it's time for me to bring on my special guest. And my special guest is right here and right now. And my special guest right here and right now is... Jamie Atkinson. How are you doing, Jamie? What is up? Magical reveal. Camera comes backwards. Hi, I'm here. You're, yeah, I mean, uh, that's the way to do it, man. It's uh, the magical appearance. You got to, I don't have a, a curtain. It's like, you know, getting to pop out from behind the curtain, but uh, the digital version of that. I like Whatever. it. Yeah. I mean, you know, just pop out on camera and scare somebody. I don't mind. This is actually fun. I, I'm like, it's funny because I'm a podcaster by trade. And we help people podcast, but I haven't done a podcast interview in months. And uh, we, we had to stop because we just had too many people and I'm back in the seat. And Rusty, this is my first interview back. So whether that means something special or not, I'm, I'm so stoked that I'm here. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, welcome. I'm, I'm happy to have you here. And um, I mean, yeah, dude, like it's so weird being on a podcast. Um, it's weird, huh? Yeah. As a guest. And just letting kind of everything go away out of your head from what's going on, like, and then everything that has to go in with it from before and after and just showing up and then like, like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to go and uh, turn it off here at the end and then share it around afterwards. And I'm good, man. This is all I have to do. I don't have to um do anything it's it's pretty nice so i I hope you get to uh enjoy having a day off i love podcasting but uh it's nice to sometimes uh you know be the uh the guest man ain't bad deal well here i am i'm the entertainment you can sit back and relax you can put me on stage and i'll say some words and hopefully help some people and uh hopefully be semi-entertaining at the same time I mean, that's that's what I hope. I can just uh, let someone give them the microphone and I can just say, okay, and go. And then let them talk for an hour or so. Um, I had that the other day. Um, some of them, some of them, it's pretty nice. I do enjoy those ones where it's someone just giving the microphone and then they talk for 40 minutes and they're like, oh yeah, well, wait a minute. Uh, I guess I should talk to you know you tell like nope that's exactly what you should be doing and it's i don't know it's something different it's something different every time it's just like how a conversation goes i guess and um because like you know i hadn't met you i met you through your yours and angels um company and production and everything and uh 
yeah, man. Like that. I, so, so it's like, I sort of know you, but I don't. And, um, which is nice because then it's like, I, I like this cause I don't have to meet people, um, as much out in the real world as I used to. And I still can Rusty, if I want to go out. Rusty, have you met Angel? Do you know Angel well? Uh, I did a podcast with her. I had her on the podcast and that, that was it. Um, I think it was, but I mean, that was probably a year ago or so. Um, but awesome. yeah, just uh, someone, someone in, in the podcast group, because those podcast groups, I mean, like it, you guys were on it, you were on it and um, it needed, it needed a new direction. It was so many of the floundering, just horrible, horrible groups. And then most of those groups, then you're going to get a message every two to three hours of someone uh, wanting to promote your uh, podcast. Uh, right, right. The... Just for context, for anyone listening, Angel's my business partner, by the way, right? So that's who we're talking about. And uh, she made this this group a couple of years ago, actually, called Need a Guest. And um, I became her business partner about a year ago. And when I became a business partner with her, it was really exciting because, you know, we came in and we tried to, you know, really amp up this group and, and blow up the business. But um, yeah, it, it just helps people find guests and be guests. But Rusty, you're right. Like before I came along and, you know, a lot of these other groups that we went in, you know, sometimes yeah. it's like that. You go into a group and you're trying to find like somebody to be a good guest or you're trying to find a good show to get on. And it's, you know, every other guy is some guy from India trying to sell you, hey, I'm going to promote you and right. get you all these downloads. And you just know that they're not real right it's some bot right and yeah. so you want to you want to get the right stuff right so yeah I, I know what you're talking about with that yeah and they're they're all over and that's the you kept i kept getting those and i'm like what is like who and then like is there anybody really on here that is wanting to podcast and had to eventually get towards your yours and angels group and um i guess you would so how did you get put along in there in yeah it's actually group. it's kind of a funny story have you used the group rusty to kind of get guests for your show as well uh yeah um I, there's been a few there's been a few um for sure there's one i have on monday that's from that group but um oh, interesting yeah um and i had uh roger peters on recently he seems to do a lot in that group um he was on maybe a month ago or I, I don't know there's so many shows that's like everything could be like <laughs> two weeks ago or you know a year and right. a half ago i don't know yeah well it's kind of a funny story as to like how we came across each other because i had actually been using um the need a guest group for you know a pretty a pretty long time like i've been in there i had been using the group i had been finding guests for my own shows um i actually had three previous podcasts one of them was a, a daily podcast. Like we were podcasting in it all the time. And um, so, you know, and I had a couple of team members that would run these podcasts for me. So we were going to need a guest. We would do a couple of posts. We would get hundreds of people who would reply wanting to get featured on the post. And actually at the time, a lot of those people who we had on the shows ended up becoming customers. We would interview them. We would build these relationships. And then a lot of the time, you know, at the end of the conversation, because they were a business owner and they needed more leads and, you know, we, we kind of got to chatting about what I did. They almost always would just blossom into these amazing relationships and, and they would become clients. So, you know, I had started reaching out to these groups because we were getting so many, you know, customers coming from these groups that I thought, you know, maybe there's something in this. Maybe I should be more connected with these groups. And so I ended up getting on a call with Angel and, you know, we were having this conversation and I said, you know, I'll, well, you know, obviously the group is an amazing source of clients. Like, you know, just in the last three months, we've probably made about, you know, six figures from the people we've interviewed. You know, you must be doing really great with monetizing the group. You know, we'd love to kind of have a conversation about maybe if there's an opportunity or a partnership there. And, and she kind of looked at me and she was like, what do you mean? Like, you made six figures in three months. Like, that's insane. And she, and, you know, so she was really honest and open. And she said, we've been growing this group. It's been growing like crazy, but you know, we don't have a direct path to monetization. We don't have a way to actually make sales. And little did I know, Rusty, she was actually onto something with that. She had the right plan because now today in the business, 
you know, we don't sell to podcasters at all. When people come into the group and they're a podcaster looking to try and find amazing guests, we literally have nothing to sell them. We just want to give them value because they create so many opportunities for the people who are looking to be guests in the group. But at the time, you know, me and Angel, we sat down and we said, maybe this would be a great opportunity to partner. So, you know, we started doing more inside of her group. We became the official partner. We started to help her figure out how to grow her business more. And, you know, it, it really, you know, initially started out as that partnership where we were planning to help each other. And around about three months into that, you know, I was doing all of this work to try and help her build stuff. She was doing all this stuff to help me build stuff. We were repeating stuff. We were doing the same things in each other's businesses. And, you know, we just, I just sat down with her one day and I was like, instead of us just doing 50% on each of our businesses, what if we put 200% into one business? Like, what if we were both just working on the same thing? And, you know, it was a completely left field conversation. And she said, let's do it. You know, and so that was around about, nine months ago now that we kind of decided to go all in together and it was about a year ago that we started the initial partnership you know and six months ago we launched our our first joint business offer together and and you know it's a the program we we kind of put together to help people get more exposure and it's been a heck of a ride since then but the group's been growing like crazy so that's how we kind of initially started that partnership that's how it began yeah, I mean, it came together pretty fast, and then uh, and then there's the uh, the app now. But so, I mean, what what is that app? It, it's uh, the school app. What what is that app? I, yeah, I so really one of the things that past what you're doing. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a really good question. So one of the things that I wanted to do more of is when we joined up as a partnership. And if you think about it, like you're a podcaster, what do podcasters want? You know, if you're a podcaster and you're listening to this, there's probably two things you want. You want to grow the show and you want to be able to make more money with the show, right? And, and arguably, maybe you want to have great guests, but usually it's the what the first two things that most that people want. Three. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Give me more money. Give me more downloads, right? Like, that's the thing that we want as podcasters. And so, you know, my past, I've been helping podcasters in my business. I've been helping them make more money and, and grow their show. And so I, I sat down with Angel and I said, hey, I'm not doing my old business anymore, but I've got all of this content, all of these resources. I had a $10,000 coaching program I've been running for three years. I had a 997 course I was selling on how to launch this top podcast. So the idea with school was we said, well, what if we just give that stuff away for free, right? Like instead of trying to sell something to a podcaster, what if we just get them coming into our community because that's valuable? And then let's just give them this stuff. And, you know, what it's evolved to today, roughly, is, you know, when a podcaster comes into our community, especially if they're a podcaster like you, they've got a more established show, they have a bigger audience, they, they're they kind of a little bit more serious, right? They're not just playing the game. They, they've kind of figured some stuff out. You know, our goal there is to really build a great relationship with those top podcasters. So over the coming month and over the next year, you know, we're going to be doing in-person events where you know, building a small community for these podcasters. We're helping these podcasters figure out how to grow. And, you know, one of the best ways to grow is to get booked, you know, on other podcasts. Um, but more importantly as well, like how to actually make money. You know, so we have, um, we sponsor shows ourselves. We have an amazing partner that we work with who runs a giant podcast network who gets, you know, sponsorship deals for some of the podcasters that we talk about. Um, but we also have some of that knowledge, that information, the the courses and materials on how to actually monetize your own offer, right? Like instead of promoting somebody else's thing, well, what if you could figure out how to sell your own offer or your own product or something along that lines? So that's initially what we had done is putting the school group together was just giving those resources away for free. And so, you know, when we, when we have people coming into our network, if you're a podcaster, it's like, it's like the best day ever. It's like Christmas. It's like, cool. Here's all the stuff that I used to sell for crazy, stupid, you know, five figure amounts and we just give you that for free now and so it's kind of like a field day for podcasters but then you know for the business owners that come in our goal is to say well how do we help you as a business owner like tap into more traffic get booked on podcasts and ultimately you know make more sales but that's how it came about so <laughs> that's what it's all about so yeah i mean uh the cool thing is there's uh there's so many business owners and um yeah like entrepreneurs like we were talking about a little earlier that are in there that aren't the aren't the podcasters that are just that are going to be on shows and it's it's a cool 
place to, uh, you know, like you're saying, it'd be nice if it was in person, like we could meet all these people and people there, all these people and people, people in person. Um, do you, you have a spot you were going to go do a, like a meetup or a convention? Was that something that I yeah, just so missed? We, yeah, no. So we just, um, in January, which was, um, a couple of weeks ago for anybody that's listening, uh, maybe you're listening to this at Christmas. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, we just went to a PodFest convention. Um, so it's a great, great convention, um, where you basically get a lot of independent podcasters that come together. And it was super funny, Rusty, because it's the first time me and Angel have met in person. So I don't know, oh, okay. like, you know, you talk about partnerships, right? Business partnerships being risky and scary. Like imagine yeah. making a business partnership with some stranger you met online who reached out to you because they saw your Facebook group and they happen to live in Costa Rica, right? And they, you know, they look like this crazy surfer and you're like, and they've got this English accent. And so poor Angel must have been thinking like, is this guy even a real person? You know, so we finally met in person. She, you know, she put her hand on my arm. She's like, okay, can confirm he is not an alien. He is a real person. And um, it was just a really great opportunity for us because getting to meet us uh, in person, our clients and other podcasters was just a really powerful way for us to figure out like what people needed more of. And, you know, so many people are missing out on the opportunity of podcasting just because it's so early. You know, one of the things that we realized is speaking to a lot of these podcasters is that some of them have giant audiences. I mean, you know, if you come in and, and I said to you, hey, you're a business owner and I'm going to give you a slot to speak for an hour and we're going to put you in a room with 4,000 people, you'd like jump at that opportunity, right? You'd be like, oh my God, that would be amazing. But that's, that's, that's like a good podcast, but like, that's like not, not a mind blowing world, crazy podcast, right? This is a very accessible podcast for the average business owner. And then we say, well, what if we could put you in the two of those rooms every week, right? Like one room over there with 4,000 people and this room over here with 3,000 people, you know, and then what if we could do that every single week for you, but you're sat at home, it only takes two hours and you're going to go get your message in front of these new people. You know, most people don't understand how powerful, you know, that audience is, but I mean, it goes one level further, you know, with podcasting and you know, this Rusty being a podcaster, you know, when listeners are tuning in, there's a there's a level of attention that's just unprecedented compared to all of these other mediums. So if you look at YouTube, this blew my mind when I read this statistic. The average YouTube podcast, right, yep. has a 2% consumption rate. It means that on average, people who listen to that entire podcast, on average, they only get 2% of the way through it across all the people that are watching that video. Now, when you look at podcasts, the average person that hits play on your podcast episode is going to listen to 80% of the episode. And so the difference is just like mind blowing when you start to think about the consumption of audio. But uh, for me, I mean, it makes sense. Like I listen to podcasts all the time. I'm walking the dog. I'm like working out. I'm doing whatever I'm doing and I'm listening to it and it's in my ears. And even if I step away, I'm going to pause it. And then when I come back later, I'm going to pick it right back up from where I left off. Right. So, right. you know, it's it's interesting as a medium. I think it's it's pretty, pretty fun for business owners. Yeah. Uh, were there any like live podcasts or anything going on? Yeah, there was a ton of people. We, we, we met some of our friends. So I have some friends called the Biz Bros. They're based out of Jacksonville and they have a podcast studio now that they're doing. Um, and so they were there and they were doing some live podcasts. There was a few other people. There was actually a booth set up at the exhibition where people could come in and, you know, they could jump in and do like a couple of podcast episodes. So it was really interesting to kind of, you know, see people getting into it in person. There's something fun about that in-person podcast, you know? Yeah. And I mean, so like even now, uh, so there's this one podcast they just uh, announced they're doing uh, a night at the LA Forum and then two nights at Madison Square Garden. And right. uh, I mean, that's crazy, man. Like, uh, that's like, you know, uh, you know, one of the best, like, most well-known theater in LA and New York and um, yeah, selling that out, man. That, like, I think there's been something to be said about like the whole medium of conversation. You know, I think when people listen to podcast interviews, you know, even if you look at YouTubers, right? Like you look at YouTubers, I don't know, take the Paul brothers, for example, right? Logan Paul, Jake Paul, you know, they sure. do these crazy videos and they are playing these characters on the stage and, you know, say what you want about them they've obviously had a lot of success 
and you know both of them started doing podcasts and, and when you take the podcast angle even for these like superstardom there's always going to be a little bit of posturing and stuff but you you see a, a different side to them like it's a, more of a real conversation and i think people like that like people want to hear the raw the real you know they don't want all of this kind of crazy overproduction they just want to understand like who are these people like are they legitimate like whether it's for entertainment whether you're interested people like realness right we we want to feel human in our connection right. and you know certainly i found as we do more podcast interviews over time you know honestly when we get real with people when we're vulnerable when we say hey we're not perfect like we've had business failures we've had upsets like we've had meltdowns from personal proportions like there's a lot of things that go wrong i think sometimes when you share more of that realness people can really connect with you you know as a business owner and you know whether you're trying to sell a product whether you're trying to grow a brand whether you're trying to be entertaining whether you're trying to you know do whatever you're trying to do i think there's an element of realness that comes to podcasting that people just they love it you know it's it's different to what we're used to you know yeah and it's not like a you know five minute uh you know, um, uh, late night show interview or something where you're just kind of getting like a few I things mean, like so you're, yeah, scripted, you're... right? Those things like I hate them. Right. It's just like they're asking these pre scripted questions. You got the fake audience laughing in the background. It just doesn't feel like legitimate or real, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, I've had people, uh, but I mean, this, this for everyone though, like I've had people that have wanted to be on my show who have, said uh you know please ask me these questions said you know said this way specifically as uh, just said uh, you know i i'm gonna point you a different direction i i have some other friends who do podcasts and i think you probably be better in this part and you know but the good thing is there's a podcast for everyone a podcast for every kind of way and it's it's okay if i if you're you're into that like then it's great like it's there for you and you can make a podcast that way. Yeah. You got to be true to your listeners. You know, like when, at the end of the day, like you are protecting your audience. They're listening to you. They're listening to this podcast because they know, look, I like Rusty and he, he, he talks about things that I'm interested in. And the more you think about like what your listener really wants and the more you protect that, the better you're going to build your audience, the better people are going to connect with you. And so, you know, this is something that we teach all of our business owners when they go and be guests on podcasts. Like it's not about you. Like, sure, you can bring value. And so, like, Rusty, if you said, like, hey, this is what my people need, help them. Yeah, sure. Like, I can take them down that route. But at the end of the day, like, this has to be built for your people. And we have to serve you as the podcaster first because, you know, we want to speak to the people that you know, like, and trust that are connected with you. And, you know, and I think it's more genuine, more fun. You have different conversations rather than just some scripted, you know, talk that you're going to have the same way every single time. And yeah, I, that's have, why I like the podcast. Have you ever um, worked a sales job where you were selling something you didn't believe in, uh, or oh, you know? I used to sell furniture, right? So okay. I don't know how much you can believe in like a sofa, but yeah, I'm I'm totally there with you. Like I used to, I used to joke to people. I say, you know, I sit down and put my feet up for a living. That was kind of my my <laughs> my funny little <laughs> quip that I used to tell people. But um, yeah, I mean, I used to believe in the company. Like, I, I think they had great products and they built things the right way. But uh, yeah, you know, in sales, you'll say the same joke to the same customer because you know it works every single time. And you right. know, your, your team members will laugh at you because you say the same thing all the time to everybody. But, you know, you can become this like repetitive machine and marketing works that way, right? Like, you know, sometimes you know what's going to work and you want to say the same thing again. But I think people want authenticity now. You know, they don't want buttoned up and perfect. They want raw and real, you know, even with the businesses yeah. they work with. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I mean, yeah, like, and they want to know, like, if, if you're selling, like, it's something that you believe in. Like, I, I've I've sold some stuff that was, like, kind of shitty. And I, but, like, and I want to, like, if someone comes up to me later on, like for a while I was selling these, they were these fucking things that are called wind spinners. And they're like these little cut um, metal things that like spin around and uh, like make some kind of trippy design kind of thing. And man, I could sell these things fucking great. But then I'm thinking like if someone comes up to me 
a year or two later and still remembers me and they go, hey, man, I bought one of those things. And those things suck. Those things were dumb. I don't want to ever buy anything from you ever again. And so I kind of have to have that mentality now, like like with the show, like it's, it has to be something that feels authentic. Because if I want to sell bullshit, I can sell bullshit all day. Like, but I don't want to sell bullshit. And uh, that's why, and it's good you can have, I can pick who my guests are that I want to have on. And I can have on people that aren't going to be bullshit or, you know, that, uh, that that's my sort of, compliment uh my way of throwing a compliment but yeah um, i mean your rep your reputation is everything you know at the end of the day what you say and decide to do it follows you around forever like it's the only thing you can't change and so as you do more and more of what you do you know obviously you can change your reputation over time but it, it's hard work and so yeah, yeah if you dig a lane for yourself that you don't want to be in and you have to build yourself out later you know it can be real tricky um that's why like we we say to a lot of people like at the end of the day not only do you have to believe in what you do, but like what you do has to be actually valuable. You know, one of the reasons that me and Angel decided to go in, into business together is that we saw an opportunity. We saw a lot of people out there in the podcast booking space that were either doing it the same way or it just wasn't that valuable or, you know, they're, they're paying for this monthly service that just they're not actually getting on decent shows. And so we kind of made this commitment where we said, well, we want to actually have great podcasters in our network. We want to have meaningful exposure for the people that want to get booked. You know, and most of all, we want to make sure that it's fun and it's interesting and you get the right kind of connections coming in. And, you know, that's what we wanted to build our community around. We wanted to serve the podcasters and we wanted to serve the guests that were coming in. And that's why Need a Guest is free. Like we wanted to keep it that way. We didn't want to, you know, sell people something to, you know, kind of come in and, and, and like have to pay like a monthly fee. You can use it. And it's one of the best resources for getting booked. We have people that come and they say, hey, we pay for this other service and we still use your group all the time because it's easier and it's faster and it's quicker. You know, something to be said for simplicity. And it's more vetted. Like you uh, don't have... Uh... I mean, there, there's there been a couple that have snuck by, but they, they're, I don't see them anymore. I think I've had one maybe in the whole time uh, I've been on there like, hey, man, I saw you in the group and I wanted to promote your butt. Like, oh, fuck, here, here it comes again. But like, that was it. There was just like one, which is, uh, like I was saying, literally on the other one, I'm getting multiples a day. And then my I open my spam folder and my spam folder is just filled with them. But like, you, you two have kept that, you know pretty well under wraps and um yeah and so like where are you if you're putting podcasters together like how are you picking who should go with who are you kind of like finding overlapping yeah, so audiences or so a lot a what? lot of the time you know one one of the things that we've really figured out pretty early on is you know it depends on who's coming in as to what they need so, you know, what, what we sell in our business is that we help the businesses that want to get booked on the best shows. You know, one, we help them get booked, but two, what we really focus on the most, Rusty, is, is the back end. You know, we help them figure out how do you actually meaningfully generate leads, get leads coming through and understanding what you do. And, you know, and, and we do it through what we call a pop-up podcast. And actually, you know, at the end of the episode, I've got one to, to kind of get you guys going through so you can experience it. I always cool. say show is better than tell, right? So we put together this free, free episode mini series, but it's actually what we teach our clients to do. And it's one of the best tools where if you're going on podcasts and you send them through one of these, you know, three episode mini series, it does a really good job of like building trust, helping to give value but ultimately, you know, selling your product. So one of the things that we do is if you're a business owner coming in, you know, we want to make sure you're on the right shows, but you've got a good back end. Because I say to people all the time, like if you get on Oprah tomorrow, that's great, right? Millions of downloads, big exposure. But are you actually going to be able to make any money from that? Like, is that exposure going to mean anything for your business? So we always talk about like these three rules of success with podcasting. Like the first rule... <laughs> Podcasters hate this when I say this because it's so oversaid, but it's consistency, right? Like we want to make sure that you get booked consistently. But when we talk about this for clients, the, the thing is we actually tell them to do less. So consistency for us means can you do this forever? You know, you might take a couple of weekends off or do whatever it is, 
but you know it's a little bit like if you work out right like if you're going to go right. work out every day for 12 weeks in a row but then you're going to be so bored or overwhelmed by it that you're never going to work out for the rest of your life that's not going to keep you fit like what's something you can do consistently every week for the rest of your life and so that's what we teach people is okay just get booked on two podcasts every week it's a couple hours in your schedule nothing too crazy but you know it's something you can keep up pretty much forever right that's something that's not massive maintenance so that's right. the first thing we tell them like step one just be consistent but don't take on too much the second thing and this is why the second piece is so important is we say well you want to make sure that you're getting booked on quality podcasts you know this is one of the reasons we love you rusty is that you've got an amazing brand you've got this following of people that listen to you you've developed this show people actually give a fuck they want to listen to what you've got to say and so you've got a quality show it's a podcast with listeners so the second thing we tell people is you know you want to make sure that you're aiming to get on these shows which have got a more established audience and what we say to people is aim for the top one or two percent because most people don't realize this but 99 percent of all podcast downloads are in the top one percent of podcasts which means if you're not in the top one percent you are fighting over the scraps of the one percent and so when we ask people that are in our community you know and they've been getting booked on podcasts and we say hey what kind of quality shows have you been getting booked on most people say i don't know they're like i got no idea right so the first yeah. thing i would tell you guys if you're listening and you, you want a really good tip this is a great website called listennotes.com. It's a free podcast search engine and you can look up podcasts and you know, it's not perfect. It's not the best scoring in the world, but it'll give you a pretty good idea like of how big a show is. You know, you can type in a name and it will tell you here's their score and here's their global rank. And what most people don't realize is that, you know, a top 5% show sounds pretty good but most of the time they're probably only getting about a hundred downloads an episode, which is not bad, right? That's not, that's not terrible. Right. That's great as an independent podcaster. But if you can get on a top 1% show, it's 2,500 downloads an episode. And so it's like the difference between those two is huge. It's like same one hour of time, but it's worth 25 times more volume. So right. that's one of the things that we really try and encourage people to think about is, you know, get booked but get on the quality shows. And then the third piece is make sure that on the back end, you're actually um, putting them through a system that's going to generate sales. And, and, you know, I can talk more about that or not. See, see what you feel. But no, if you want to go for it, man. Up. Like, yeah, that's what you're you here know, for. And, and, and this is, this is kind of what we loved about when we came into partnership. Cause Angel like looked at me and my business and she's like, Jamie, like your business is all about helping podcasters make sales and make money. Right. And we did this little three episode podcast mini series to walk people through and to, to get sales. And she's like, I'm over here on the left hand side getting bookings. Like, what if we just ha make our businesses have a baby? Right. How would that work? And so the third and final piece that we encourage every podcaster to do is to build, you know, what we call a pop up podcast. And these are really interesting because they work for podcasts. If the, like you have your own show just as well as they work if you're a guest on a podcast. But what it is, it's a three episode um, mini series. So, you know, like when the circus comes to town and then it leaves the next weekend, there's a bit of urgency, right? Like, oh man, I should go to the circus because they're only here for a week. Well, these right. pop-up podcasts, it's the same thing. When you download an episode, it's a private feed that will give you the first episode. Then on the second day, it gives you the second. Then the third day, it gives you the third episode. And at the end of the week, all of the episodes disappear. And so because there's a lot of urgency around it and because it's in the audio format as opposed to like a video series, the consumption rate is through the roof. There was a, a lady that we copied this idea from in 2020 called Emily Hirsch and she ran this, you know, seven figure Facebook ad agency and she was doing like a Facebook ad promotion to one of these pop up podcasts. And I knew her and I was fascinated because I was in the podcast space. So I got her on an interview and I said, tell me all of your secrets. What are these pop-up podcasts? Like, I'm fascinated. And what was interesting is, is she used it as a placeholder for, you know, you know like a webinar, like a traditional 60-minute yeah. come and we're going to like tell you about our product and sell you at the end. Well, she was doing a webinar, but she was having really low show-up rates. She was only having 10% of people who signed up for it actually showing up to the event. 
And so what she did was she, she recorded these three mini podcast episodes and she made them, you know, valuable. So it was a little bit more, you know, it wasn't just a pitch. It was like, okay, I'm actually going to give you something and I'm going to help you. And then at the end, she would make the offer. And what happened was when she put them through these three episodes, she actually had 50 to 60% of the leads were consuming all three episodes. Oh, sure. And so okay. like the consumption rate was like night and day, you know, compared to the webinar. But yeah. what she liked about it, which was really interesting, was she had a, a lower ticket offer and a higher ticket offer. So she sold something that was about two or three thousand dollars. And then she had a, a really expensive thing that she sold for fifty thousand dollars. So when she did the webinar, the majority of people showing up for it were kind of, um, you know, more like freebie seekers, right? More beginners, people who were just kind of getting started. They had a lot of time free, so they would show up for this webinar. But there weren't many like really established business owners that were showing up for it, right? Because if you're a busy business owner, you know, you don't have time to do a 60 minute webinar. So right. when she was doing the webinars, 75% of the people that were booking sales calls, they were booking a call for her lower ticket offer, the $3,000 offer. When she swapped to the pop-up podcast, what yeah. was interesting was 75% of the applications were for her high ticket offer for the 50K. And so when she was having these applications, they were like much more established business owners. And, you know, we never like fully confirmed and looked at the data to figure it out, but like it kind of makes sense if you think about it, right? Like high level people, they listen to podcasts, right? But they might right. not show up for a five day challenge or a, or a webinar. So that's where we kind of got the idea from. And so what we do today is we, we marry those two mediums together because if you're on a podcast, everybody listening is a podcast listener. So if we ran like a Facebook ad and told them to go download a podcast, you don't know whether they're a podcast listener, right? Like maybe they prefer blogs, maybe they prefer YouTube. But if you're going and promoting your show on a podcast and then you send them to another podcast, you know, there's typically a very, very high consumption rate. And so those two things together, that's what we help most of our clients do. We, one, get them traffic by going on to these existing shows, which have good reputations, good audiences, you know, and our aim is to provide a lot of value to help the podcaster, you know, get what they want out of it. Um, and then on the back end, you know, if somebody's coming in and they say, you know what, like what this Jamie guy's talking about sounds legit. Like, yeah, I would love to go get booked on podcast. We'll say, hey, like we've got this little pop-up series. You can go through it. You can learn about what we do. You know, you can use that for free and, you know, you can get a lot of value. But if at the end of it, you actually want to talk to us about getting help in your business, you know, you can book a call. And it's very, you know, low sales pressure, right? It's like value, yeah. value, value. And hey, if you want some help, here's the next step. Um, but this works phenomenally well you know inside of our business and this is what we help clients to do and that's why i'm on a podcast today like this is this is what we do we do a couple of interviews a week i go out and you know i go go to the beer garden afterwards or i go out with my girlfriend natasha and we take the dog for a walk and even my dog outside is sat in the sun right now just relaxing and that's all we need to do for marketing you know to grow the business it's nothing kind of crazy you know yeah and i mean you're getting more and more people just showing up just because i mean just and what how like popular podcasts are getting there's still and there's still so much room like for oh, so early for it to right. go and i don't know i don't see it i don't know like uh what was the last radio you listened to like or do you listen to radio still like right well i don't I know have it in my car but i live in costa rica so it's all in spanish so i'm <laughs> okay if a song comes on like i'll listen to it but most of the time i'm, I'm listening to podcasts i've got, got my phone plugged in and I want to listen to what I want to listen to. You know, yeah. I, I think Gary Vee talked about that, right? He said that the world is just going compartmentalized. You know, we used to have two TV channels. Now there's a billion and every every kind of YouTube channel you could want. So it, everyone has their little home for what they want. My mom is super into gardening. You know, so she watches, if you open up her YouTube, it's just growing plants, making vegetables, like all, all of the stuff. You can tell I don't know much about it as I'm like making vegetable. I'm pretty sure you grow vegetables, but, um, you know, but she's got all of these very specific mini TV channels and mini media channels that are specific to her. I, I actually, I asked her a while ago, I was like, do you listen to any podcasts? And, and she showed me a couple. She's like, oh yeah, here's this gardening podcast I checked out, right? So if you have a, a business where you want to sell to people with gardening, like that's the best place to go. Like those people are listening, you know? 
yeah, I mean, you can get someone on a three hour podcast about gardening and you know, that that's uh, in that world is fascinating and you can go with it and you can learn all kinds of whatever you need to learn, or you can just hear good stories about gardening. Right. And we had a there's... guy join our, our network the other day. He has a golf podcast. He has 45,000 downloads a month, all about golfing. Right. So it's like, you sell a golf thing, like go speak to him with another lady. She gets, you know, over 2 million downloads every year on her podcast. And she speaks to women in midlife. Um, it's like it's like women who are in their fifties to sixties and they want to like, you know, go after everything they want at, at that age. Right. The kids have left. And so there's all of these like sub niches of these different shows. And if you can find where your audience is, you know, there's plenty of these podcasts who have pretty good size audiences that, you know, they aren't shouting about it. You know, I, I have a friend who has a podcast with 4 million downloads and I asked him, I was like, are you making any money with it? Like, are you promoting it? Are you doing anything crazy? He's like, no, it's like, I just talk about travel, you know, and it's kind of fun, you know, and, and he, it's kind of understated. And, you know, so there's a lot of shows out there like that where there's opportunity and honestly, they need just as much help as, as, you know, as you need help. And a lot of the time, you know, you can build these really great relationships with individuals while you're marketing your business. And, you know, it becomes this, you know, double benefit. I also like people. So it's fun for me to just go and connect and meet new people and make friendships, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's cool that there's ways to do this and you don't have to travel all over. And uh, like I, I, some, some days I, I bitch about uh, having stuff on at different times, but at the same time, I can have people on, that live in fucking uh, Australia or New Zealand. And, you know, how much would that cost to go and travel over to them uh, or have them travel? It's literally a day of travel to get here, a day of travel to get back and then, you know, spend a little bit of time with me. But, you know, I can have those people on whenever I want. And it's, it's fun. It's cool. You got to meet people from all over. And, um, where else can you do that? Uh, right, right. Yeah. So yeah, it's fun. It's fun as a medium, and um, yeah, I'm a. As you can tell, I'm a big podcasting fan. But it's nice to be, you know, because I say to this people all the time, like it's really hard to get an established podcast. Like if you're a podcaster and you're trying to grow your show, like to get to that ten thousand download a month mark is like it's hard. Like it's a lot of work. You have to have a good concept. You have to be able to engage an audience and ironically one of the best ways to grow as a podcaster is to go get you know booked on other podcasts and you know share audiences we see a lot of people who do like episode drops right like if there's another show that's like yours you might go drop like a 10 minute clip of an episode on each other's shows but ah. it's it's hard to grow those shows and so one of the things that i say to people all the time is like you know yeah you could start a podcast but before you do that why don't you just go get on somebody else's show that has an established audience because you know, if you make your own show and nobody's listening, you, you know, you're just making content for yourself. But if you go on somebody else's show, they've already brought the people, you know? Yeah. Um, and then, so, okay. So then at, I, I guess we're, we're going to get to the wrapping it up here. So, um, so to talk more about your, what you have going on and, um, you know, how people can find it, how people can use it and, uh, or how people can, find you i'm not going to say use you but um use you know. me right Take yeah yeah use advantage. exactly yeah it's good well, yeah use jamie.com is uh gonna be the <laughs> website coming on here later on right. so well the thing i say to people all the time is you know the first thing is using our community because need a guest is free you can go to need a guest.com you can join we got two facebook groups one called need a guest one called the podcast network and you know going into that group you can go in We've got amazing support people who, as soon as you join the group, will, will shoot you a message and they'll try and help you, you know, to figure out how to get the most out of the group. And you could go in there and start getting booked on podcasts literally in an afternoon. Like it doesn't take much time at all. But a lot of the time people, they join a group like that and they don't know exactly what to do. They don't know the right thing to do. So what we did was we decided, well, let's just put all of that information into a three episode mini series, which is this pop up podcast. And we'll kind of show you guys how to do it. And, you know, it's kind of fun because not only are you going to like get the information on how to get booked, but you also get to kind of like watch what we do as well as listening to what we say, because these pop up podcasts, they're the mechanism that we use to actually get customers coming through, 
booking sales calls. And we do this really interesting thing with the email sequence, which a lot of people get really excited about. So I won't spoil it, but you know, if you go download it, you'll probably experience it. And you know, it's just a very effortless way for you to be able to get people going through. So we used to teach this process inside of our $8,000 coaching program. It was like, hey, if you wanna learn how to you know, get booked on shows, pay us a bunch of money, but we, we just took what was originally one of our first modules and we just put it inside of this podcast series for free. So yeah, if you guys want to go download that, you can go to needaguest.com. That link will get you downloading the pop-up podcast. You can also you know go join the groups and really within three or four days, you'll be booked on podcasts and be beginning to kind of use this process. So yeah, if you're interested, you're a business owner or even a podcaster and you just want to get more exposure, more traffic, more leads. Yeah. Wholeheartedly recommend. And pretty easy need a guest.com it's nothing too crazy for you to go type into a url <laughs> yeah uh it definitely had much worse uh right. long 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 url so need a guest.com pretty easy so um perfect so jamie thank you so much for being on and uh getting to meet you and uh meet meet you in the this realm of the world and uh yeah it was great meeting you and uh hope you have a rest of your day. That is great. And yeah, we'll uh, stay in touch. All right. Dude, thank you. Appreciate you being on. And yeah, thank you for listening, guys. I hope you got a lot out of the episode. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, that is Jamie Atkinson. So go follow Jamie because I said so. And go to needaguest.com. And thank you, everyone, for being here on the Public Access Podcast, the podcast, or the pu 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 podcast, like La Bamba, what's up, uh, because we're in Pennsylvania. So that is the show, man, boom. It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker. It's Rusty Diamond, motherfucker.